Good morning, friends. Welcome back to my kitchen. You're at that 1870s homestead. My name's Rachel. And today it's maybe gonna be a little bit of tips on canning, whatever I can share, but it's not like recipe-based how-to. I'm gonna just share with you, I've got a lot of stuff to process and kind of how I go about streamlining my day when there is just a lot to process. So we've got a big tub of cucumbers for pickles. The sink is full of beets. I've got two containers, large bowls of shredded um, cabbage to make coleslaw um, or pickled red cabbage. I have a basket of tomatoes, some zucchini that needs to be blocked up for mock pineapple. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to do like a simple brine to start with and then mix it up and just show you my day in the kitchen getting stuff canned. Right now, um, I do kind of a kind of a blend of a quick, easy pickle and a two day pickle recipe to make sure I get the best crunch out of my cucumbers. And so part of a two day process would be that you soak your pickles in a pickling salt water solution. So I have eight cups of water to start with. We'll see how that goes. For every four cups of water, you add a half a cup of pickling salt. So I'm gonna add a cup of pickling salt. We're gonna just stir that to dissolve. I'm gonna be soaking my cucumbers in that while I get other things processing. All right. Now I'm just gonna let these sit and soak for during the day till I'm ready for them. I would say three hours is probably a minimum that you wanna soak your pickles in your salt water brine. Okay, all I gotta do is scrub my beets. Um, I'm gonna trim the tops, trim the root bottoms. If you're gonna boil your beets, you don't wanna trim your tops off. You wanna leave about a half an inch so that the, um, they don't bleed too bad in the water, but I'm gonna roast my beets. I roasted them last year and found that I like the flavor of roasted beets and my pickled beets really well. So we're just gonna roast these. I'll check them periodically and um, then we will be good. So they don't have to be absolutely perfect because you're gonna peel the outer layer once they're done. So as long as they're good enough no big chunks of dirt on there. I'm gonna take that top off just cause it's a little deep. Oh, isn't that beautiful? All right, I'm gonna just keep doing this. We'll get these in the roaster and then we will move on to the cabbage. All right, that's the last of the beets. I'm just gonna pop these in the oven and let them roast. I'll just go through with a fork randomly pull them out as they become fork tender. Like the really, really big ones I chopped in quarters, some I chopped in halves, turning them skin side up as best as I can. And then, yep, they're gonna go in. I'm gonna cut that one a little bit more. They're gonna go in the oven as is. So I will see you back. I'm gonna clean up my mess, take all these beet tops out to the goats and we'll be back for cabbage. Cabbage is washed, cucumbers are resting. I pulled the beets out of the oven. They're ready to be pilled. Before I start peeling those packing jars with cabbage and everything, I'm gonna start just a big, huge pot of very simple brine. So I've got 24 cups of water and I'm just doing equal parts water to vinegar. So, um, one second, and you guys can come up with 
or I should say, feel free to edit your simple brine however you like it. Um, you know, I am not gonna do much with respect to spices for the beets and the cabbage. So there's first eight cups of vinegar. One second, then I'll come back. We're just using um, regular distilled vinegar. Okay, I think I need to go get another jug. So that's one thing I keep a lot in my pantry supply, or pantry supplies for canning, is gallons and gallons of vinegar. Just pick yourself up one. Every time you go to the store, you know, if you've got like, I try to make sure I always have about six gallons of vinegar in, down in the pantry. Let me go grab another gallon, I'll be right back. Sorry, I wasn't recording. <laughs> I thought I was. So I finished off with the 24 cups of vinegar, 24 cups of water. Um, you're gonna see lots of recipes out there that are different variations depending on what the recipe calls for. If you just are doing a simple brine, half and half, you'll always be right. Um, and then I added three and a half cups of my raw sugar. So that's one way I try to, I've made a decision consciously to say if I'm gonna use sugar, I'm at least gonna use the rawest form of sugar, unprocessed, unrefined. This is succanut, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, and that's all I do for a simple brine. Now, if you like the flavor of pickle spice, no matter what you're pickling, cabbage, peppers, uh, beets, like I said, you could totally do that too in part of your base. Um, <coughs> but I think um, for the purposes of today, and just going quickly in the kitchen, I'm just doing a simple vinegar water brine with a little bit of sugar in it. And then anything that I want unique, I will just add with my um, jars. All right, so I'm gonna just bring that up to a boil, let that um, heat up and that sugar dissolve. This is another tip I found in my pantry, pickle brine that I canned. So I have leftover pickle brine. So if I find that I, and this does have a little bit of spice in it, if I find that I don't have enough, I can use this as well. So I think next I'm going to start on peeling the beets. I'm not gonna bore you with that. Just come on over here. Let me see if I can pull you around. So all I did whew, when I, they came out of the oven was I threw a sheet on to help steam them so they're ready to peel and I'll get those jarred up. Okay, my tip. I've mentioned this in previous like pickle, true pickle videos, but I'm doing it here. So I'm cutting that heat off. Everything's dissolved, melted. It, I saw not a rolling boil by any means, but it was just starting. I'm gonna let this cool, at least down to room temperature. Um, why? So if you struggle with mushy pickles, mushy pickled cabbage, any kind of thing that you're making with brine and you want your vegetable to hold on to that texture and that crunch. I don't cook any of my vegetables in the brine. I don't pour hot brine over my vegetables. I just cook it for whatever that canning time is. That step along with adding pickle crisp to anything that I'm pickling, not just pickles, pickled cabbage, pickled beets, pickled peppers, anything that I want it to hold on to that cr texture and that crunch um, are my two main tips with respect to retaining that in your pickled uh, pantry items. So I just wanted to share that while I cut it off so you know when it comes time to jarring it, it'll be room temperature. Well, it's finally time to start labeling the first round. I, yeah, it's still warm. I wouldn't say it's room temperature at all. 
and my Amish water bath canner can hold 24 pints. So I just went ahead, hadn't planned on doing it, but I had a whole bunch of um, bell peppers. So I packed up a few jars of those and we'll pickle those as well. Never pickled bell peppers before, but figure, hey, that'll be handy. And just gonna fill these up. They each have, now all the pints have uh, eighth of a teaspoon of pickle crisp and the quarts of beets have um, a quarter teaspoon of pickle crisp. And those turned out absolutely gorgeous with the golds and different colors of reds. They'll all turn red once they can. <clears throat> but I wasn't gonna say anything and I'm just feeling so crappy that I'm gonna say it. Um, I had a procedure done yesterday and I felt awful and my stomach hurts and I just don't feel good, but I had all this produce to can. And sometimes life happens and we still have to take care of things. So streamlining your canning process and making it so much easier for us to deal with without having to do tons of different recipes and still be able to preserve food this is like a saving grace for me right now. Um, I don't think, I definitely couldn't have done this if I had to stop and start over with every single thing I was doing, rather than just getting all the veggies processed, chopped, prepped in the jars, and then my common brine to just save the day. So something to think about. I know it won't be everybody's cup of tea, but I'm letting you know how I handle the madness when it's coming in. Okay, the nice thing about doing this too is I miscalculated how many jars I could actually fit in here. I could fit a couple more, but I was able to go chop up. I've got four pints now of banana peppers in here as well. Just have more water to top this off. Now, what I'm going to do is the peppers only go for 10 minutes once it comes to a boil and the coleslaw or pickled cabbage goes um, for 20 minutes. So after 10 minutes of boiling, I'll just come out here and pull off the peppers and then let the cabbage finish up. Now, I'm gonna take a break. Um, the beets, I might throw the beets on uh, with that same brine. I'm not doing anything else. Those can uh, cook. I'm gonna take a break and then all we have to wrap up is um, packing and filling the cabbage. But all I'm gonna do differently to that one is I'm adding jalapenos and peppers to the jar along with the jalapenos and banana peppers to the jar along with the pickles, adding one cup of honey to the remaining broth. And then we will wrap that up because I'm making my spicy honey pickles, my favorite. There is a video on our channel for that. There's a video for all of this, I'm pretty sure. I know for the coleslaw, for the beets, First time doing peppers right here with you guys. One brine to rule them all. I'll link that video. It's it's different for me every single time. It's just what I feel like doing, um, but it gives you the concept. So, all right. Uh, I will see you guys when it's cucumber time. We'll wrap up this video and see what all we got accomplished in the kitchen today. And I hope it inspires you. So see you on the next round. Okay, well, it's the next day, and I completely realized I forgot to film the ending, like I said. So this is it. All of this I got done during that pickling session. That's pretty cool, isn't it? We ended up with two, four, five can uh, quarts of pickled beets, seven quarts of my spicy honey 
um, pickles. Uh, 22 pints of pickled cabbage. Four pints of the pickled bell peppers, and they turned out really nice. Really nice. Um, four pints of the pickled banana peppers. And then I had just like random peppers left over. So there's some banana peppers, jalapenos, a whole jar of jalapenos, and then like a mixed pickle pepper blend. So all of that is good. Now I realize as I got busy through yesterday, I didn't mention some of the ideas, right? So while you have that common brine, what could I have done to jazz it up if I had felt like it? <clears throat> and um, your peppers, right? You could have added garlic to the jar, um, minced garlic to the cabbage. Um, I've done this like Mexican version before where I've added diced jalapenos to it. You could add shredded cab um, carrots to half of it. You could do a lot of different things. The pickles, again, I could have added dill to some other seasonings. And then um, the beets, if I wanted some of them spice, I could have thrown in a couple cloves, a little bit of cinnamon stick, um, whatever seasonings you like to pickle things with. So that just gives you an option too, where you make a common brine and then you just throw the unique variations of flavoring that you want in the jars that are different. Um, I chose to just go standard. All the unique things give everything their own original individual flavors. Um, with the exception of the honey pickles, you know, there at the end, I threw in the honey to um, add to the brine. I don't even know if I filmed that. If I didn't film that, I know I told you about it. I added a cup of honey at the end to the leftover brine for my honey pickles. So, like I said, I was feeling awful yesterday. There's no way I could have gotten this done had I not streamlined my preserving process. And I've got videos on how I do this with tomato sauce and things like that. And I'm always looking at ways to just make huge batch canning days go easier and more efficient for me. So just something to think about, especially for new canners and maybe even some seasoned canners out there. You haven't really thought about this process, but um, it's definitely made a world of difference in my kitchen. So. I'll see you guys either out in the garden or the next canning video or using some of this glorious food and cooking up here in the kitchen. So talk to you then. Bye guys.